I had a kind of guitar riff, and I think, well, it's another music radio WLS hit. Now, it came after that, but it was that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. And Sheriff Tom Dart joins us now. We're celebrating 100 years of WLS. Who was your favorite disc jockey when you were a kid on the Big 89, Tom Dart? Oh, God, that's a great question. Were you a I mean, Landecker guy? Were you a Lujak guy? I, you know what? I liked Landecker a lot. Really did. And uh, I remember it vividly. To be honest with you, I hate to say I'm dating myself, but I remember it very well. Yeah, now you're a little younger than I am, so it, it came, you, you know, you, you were more towards the end of it. But, man, this place just had a mammoth impact on uh, music radio and, uh, and uh, on radio in general. And uh, that's why we're celebrating <laughs> 100 years. It did too, Stephen. I'm not, I won't go off the rails here, but I'll tell you what, it was a much simpler place then too, because I, I'll tell my children, usually when we're like, I'm dropping at school or something, I'll tell them that it was so nice to have this, we all shared everything in the sense of we all, like when we hear a song from the 70s or 80s, we all remember where we were at, because yep. that's all, all of us listened to, because it was the same song playing for everybody. Now everyone's in their own little universe. You don't know any of this stuff, whereas before we, we shared so much of this stuff, and I, you know, I just think it was better. And, and I think the thing you and I can agree on about this, um, we agree on most things, but I think we can agree about this, is the kids are wrong and we're right. Oh, my God. I just finished telling three of them that as I dropped them <laughs> off for school this morning. I was sending them off with a cherry message of, you're wrong, I'm right. <laughs> See you later. Uh, congratulations <laughs> yeah, exactly. to you and the fight. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations to you and the fighting men and women of the Cook County Sheriff's Department. Um, you got a big one yesterday. You have talked about the mismanagement of electronic monitoring and all that goes on. What did you guys find? You know, uh, this was a guy who's on electronic monitoring for a murder case. Uh, mind you, I don't pick people to go on electronic monitoring. The judge, no, of course not. So he's on monitoring for that. We got some information about guns in his house, and sure enough, we've gone in and we found four of them. And I don't have it in front of me, Steve. I've got I, I got rifles, handguns, and drugs. There you go. Um, yeah, and yeah. I was going to say, I, I thought there was a rifle involved, too. Um, and so he's now charged with, in addition to the murder case he's got, he's also charged with gun cases. But he'd also been previously charged with a gun case, too. So that, none of that's, you know, a, a shocker, unfortunately. The county sheriff stepped up with the yeah. electronic monitoring question, along with the bail question, obviously. But uh, this electronic monitoring, is the, 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 is the status still the same where... If I go on a, a, a monitor, I'm going to have time where you don't even know where I am? You got it. That's what the brain surgeons down in Springfield thought was a good idea. Um, there was no, I mean, literally, there was no evidence at all that suggested that this was going to be a good thing, a necessary thing. People already had movement to go to work, to go to school, uh, to go to funerals, to go to wakes, uh, you name it. And so they gave them 48 hours where I have to turn the machines off, and it has absolutely, objectively increased the crime that we're seeing. So, bravo. Great job. Well, and this particular guy that you were talking about has been on electronic monitoring since May of 2021. Yeah, Jane, the, the problem there, what people understand, is that people get day-for-day day credit while they're on home monitoring. So why not? extend out home monitoring as long as you want so that when you eventually plead guilty, you served almost your entire sentence. In some cases, you have served your entire sentence in your house. Wow. And then you're free to go and do the bad stuff again. Wow. In your house. Yeah, well, you, I know, you, you've learned your lesson. I'm sure you've learned your lesson. Yeah, right. You, you'll, um, be, you, you'll be different now. So you're on the front lines of this. Your fellow county sheriffs are on the front lines of this. Do you feel like you're still not being listened to for political reasons? You know, it's it's it, it's you know it's definitely a different world. I'll tell you that much because there's just certain things that are wildly frustrating to me because I don't really care where you're on the spectrum, but that I just think we can all agree that we should say, okay, now this is something that we all are supportive of. And one of the things that I was particularly frustrated with is like on extended magazines because we're objectively getting more and more of those. They're a statusy type thing for the bad guys to have. And if we did increase the penalties on just that narrow group, 
the bad guys get it. They'll go back to just the regular magazines more often than not, and that would reduce the number of people being shot because these guys, by and large, have never been to a range before. So it's not as if there's precision shooting going on. Innocent people are getting hit. So when you add more rounds to it, you exponentially increase the number of people you hit. And so we had been pushing for that to be made so that you get caught with one of those magazines, you get serious consequences, and instead, uh, we got a $100 fine attached to it. And I know this is going to be a shock to you. I'm glad you're sitting down. I have insisted we issue the tickets. We haven't seen a lot of the $100 fines coming in. Uh, yeah, and uh, right. oddly Where's enough, that? you don't have time for a collection agency to uh, go yeah. out and, uh, <laughs> like, these guys are scared anyway. But explain to folks yeah. why, in a Democrat-controlled state, um, th- this can't be pushed forward, a, a piece of legislation like that. You know, there's people have gotten to be so hesitant for anything, anything uh, that raises penalties that they, you can't even have a logical debate anymore. Whereas, you know, could you have a logical debate? Well, this was too much. This was too little. This was, yeah, you could, used to be able to have those type of discussions. Now you can't even have a logical debate. It's just not even happening. And so, I, I, you know, it's just like, okay, what are we doing here? And so that's why, you know, it's, Steve, I, you know, on most of these things, I've thrown up my hands in regards to those type of changes and just have literally said, okay, what's within our control and what can we do to make it better? And so for us, that's what led us into the carjacking area with a vengeance using data, using technology, uh, you know, forcing the uh, manufacturers to, you know, let us know where these cars are that are being taken. Um, And, you know, and also, frankly, a lot of the work we're doing in Austin and in downtown is all like this data driven element of it where we're pinpointing people at what time. And so it's it's I mean, I wish we had more help from some other entities. We, We don't get it. That's fine. But we so we'll continue to do it. But I'll tell you, it just makes it a lot trickier for us. I'll tell you that much. So do this for me. Hang through the traffic here. We'll come back. We'll talk more because we barely scratched the surface here. I want to talk about the carjacking, obviously. Uh, but uh, just your assessment, your all assessment about your level of optimism or yeah. pessimism in 2024. I'd like to talk about the hopes. I've got a couple of good stories to ask about. Right. And will Tom Dart leave awesome. his job as the Cook County Sheriff and join up with people? <laughs> And tour the country. <laughs> uh, stand by. Yeah. More in a moment. I'd argue nobody's got a tougher law enforcement job than the Cook County Sheriff, Tom Dart. And yet he always takes time to be accessible. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. I know you don't do missing persons necessarily, but if you find Fritz Kagey, Tom, will you let us know? <laughs> <laughs> we actually we actually have a, a one of the largest missing person oh. initiatives, for lack of a better word, going on in the country right now. And it's been phenomenal, Steve, because there was this really, really uh, big concern going on that a uh, serial killer was loose in yeah. the southern part of the city and suburbs, particularly targeting African American women. So we targeted uh, this issue, I'd say, about three years ago now, and we took 150 people from around the state, uh, women who had been missing for more than three years and put them into a, um, a program that we did to try to find them all. And we've found 20 some so far, uh, most of them alive. And there's a various reasons why they're off the grid. And it's wild when you hear the stories. And then unfortunately you have found some that are dead, but with the, the, the notion of trying to, you know, just find out what the truth is. Is there a bigger issue here? And thankfully we can say right now, we have not found a bigger issue, uh, but we have found a lot of really, heartbreaking cases along the way, but we've been able to close out 20 some cases of women that were been missing for um, decades. That was, there was one that was in the paper recently, a woman who did not even have a name. They called her seven. Um, That was one of the cases we had. um, And we've had many other ones where people were not properly fingerprinted, where people, they vanish. They just vanish. And and that's where some of the, the, the internet fire, this, that's to get started well then there must be a serial killer and all that so it's important to knock those rumors down if you can do it literally that's what we did that's literally what we went out to do and we've been able to do it so far we still have quite a few more to go obviously but we've been to helpfully hope we've been bringing some closure to some families and other ones we're still working on it uh, you have a good news story, Jay? Well, I do have a good news story. The, um, I was reading that the inmates at Cook County Jail just completed a nonprofit writing program as a 
uh, as a way to reduce violence and a way to to learn. Talk about that a little bit because it's important. Now, this is a group that came that's not part of the jail, but they came in and they were helping the inmates um, learn. With writing? Yeah, with writing, grow, become authors. Yeah, yeah. So there's a group called Contextos. It was so interesting. This amazing woman named Deborah Gittler brought it to me. She said, what, can I run the program? I said, how much is it going to cost? She said, it's free. I said, you've sold me. And it came out of El Salvador prisons, which are some of the worst in the world, where the, she was down there running the program. But she's from up this way. And it teaches people how to write their own memoirs. And what it does is obviously it teaches them, you know, writing skills, obviously. But beyond that, it teaches them how to really think about themselves. And I've read some of these memoirs because it's been going on now for, I think, five years or so mm-hmm. now. And it, it, it's amazing what you read. You read stories about pe- uh, men and how they want to establish a relationship with their kids, but they can't. They'll talk about issues they had when they were growing up. And from what we have been able to, I mean, we know it. Most of these are the first time these guys have ever talked about these issues. And so it has this effect of sort of changing the way people view things. And it's not to say it's perfect, but as they say, jails and prisons have run, run pretty much the same way for about 300 years now. Um, so anything we can do to go at it in a different direction to get people maybe to think, maybe to start thinking about their actions in a different way in these bigger pictures. And so that's wildly, it's an amazing program. And you should, uh, as I said, yeah, you, uh, should look you into should it. read some of these things. It's like, yeah. Yeah, because we, we just had Chris, Chris Swanson in uh, Genesee County, Michigan, mm-hmm. sheriff, talking about the National Sheriff's Association Ignite program which is sort of a similar concept, and that's given folks a fair shot who want to um, have a shot to rebuild their lives um, when they get out or, you know, be f- better educated while they're in. All right, carjacking. We are, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's misleading. Carjacking numbers were down last year a little bit, not a lot. They were down a little bit. But at the same time, the number of cars being stolen from, like, out in front of a house or whatever, that exploded with the majority of those being Kias and Hyundais because people figured out how to steal those. So we continue to work with other partners to utilize technology because when we have had the tracking devices and helicopters, we're catching people and catching them quickly. When we don't have those, it's a problem. So we anticipate getting our own helicopter. We share two of them with CPD. They're getting, I think, two new ones. We're getting our own so that we should have at least three helicopters up by the end of this year. That will be really helpful. The car manufacturers, I had a bill passed in Springfield that requires them to turn over data to us on tracking. That's helped somewhat. Some are a little bit um, not so helpful, um, but uh, that's helped a little bit. So we have a lot of good things in play, but it's still bad. It's still bad. And our uh, our friend Ro Khan, I think, was a big part of trying to come up with the statistics for the uh, the case to uh, move the ball forward, yeah? yeah? You know, to be honest with you, Steve, I, thank God this is just us talking amongst ourselves here. It, none of this could have happened without his uh, work. It wouldn't have happened. He really has done, amaz- he's done amazing he's stuff. Cool. He really has. Yeah, I mean, it is. he's just so passionate about this, and He's been phenomenal about it. So, I mean, between that and then we also have a major effort going on downtown with retail thefts because that's exploded. Mm-hmm. And it's also made it to where people don't feel comfortable coming downtown. So we've made more arrests than ever down there. And the biggest uptick, Steve, has been in uh, immigrants from Venezuela. Uh, we are getting a, an explosion of that occurring. And when we, we, we get them, we find that they're also being manipulated by people who are telling them, you steal things, uh, uh, bring it back to us, and we'll give you a phony ID so you can get a real job and right. all this other wow. stuff. So it's very insidious what's going on here. And we're going to talk about We're having a press conference later today to talk about it. Wow. Well, it's important stuff. So uh, we're going to talk about burying the lead. That's going to be big news later mm-hmm. today. Yeah. Um, before you go, you mentioned the theft thing. And, you know, people go, well, it's just shoplifting. Shoplifting uh, run rampant means that people are going to be afraid to not just spend money in stores, but to uh, come downtown. And you got to have people downtown. Clayton Harris was here, and Eileen O'Neill Burke was here. These are your two top candidates for state attorney. I'm not asking for an endorsement, but just anecdotally, Clayton Harris said he wouldn't necessarily raise the felony minimum back from 300 to 
or from a thousand back to three hundred, I should say, um, where Kim Fox put it. Eileen O'Neill said she'd do it in a minute. Eileen O'Neill Burke, is that a big deal or not? It is because you know. Here's the thing. I mean, I I, I get it. I mean, you know, I'm not an idiot. Um, I used to be a prosecutor. I used to sit there and think, you know, oh, retail theft. We got murders. We can't deal with this. But you're 100 percent right. If people are afraid to come to an area, the city starts having major problems because that's the biggest revenue generator. And here's the thing: we can walk and chew gum at the same time. So we can sit there and say to ourselves, "Okay, this is a first offense, and it's 410 dollars. Uh, we'll keep it as a misdemeanor." But we also can sit there and say, um, yeah, this is uh, $300, but he's been on probation while he did this for theft, and he's got 10 other in his background. Let's make it a felony. Right. That's where it's really frustrating me, because we've had multiple cases like that where I'm sitting there saying, you got to be kidding me. Um, I, I understand it's below 1000 bucks. I get it. I can count. But he's on probation right now for retail theft. This is insanity. Let's take so bad guys off the take street. Take the bad guys, take off, the bad the guys, street. guys off the street. And That's te- it. Teach us how to live better lives. Quick thing, in Orland Park, you are working with the Orland Township Avoid the Sweetheart Scam. It's an event happening February 7th to help senior citizen safety and crime prevention uh, presentation. I think it's fantastic. And more information on your Cook County Sheriff's website, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. So. And, 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 Absolutely, because unfortunately that's an area that's exploding and the seniors are being treated horribly. They're getting scammed and losing so much money. It's horrible. Uh, Tom Dart, thank you. Look for Tom Dart uh, all over your news the rest of the day and tonight. Press or later on uh, immigrants being exploited to commit crimes in exchange for documents they never receive and uh, what that means for crime in the city as well. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank you guys so much. Thank All right, you. Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart. Great so, information, as always. A little too modest. You know what I mean? <laughs>